Everyone dies at some point. And with that reality comes some cold, hard facts. You will have a last kiss, a last hug, a last phone call, and a last photograph. On Friday night, we met up at Casey's house. Even though she has an annoying neighbor, her parents built this amazing fire pit that's the perfect spot for chilly autumn nights. After starting the fire and roasting some marshmallows, she brought out something I hadn't seen in at least a decade, a disposable camera. This is a special camera, Casey said with a grin. Apparently, when you take a picture, it'll be your last photo before you die. I sat there trying to digest what she was saying. You mean, the camera kills you? Yeah, like that one Goosebumps book, Brady replied. Say cheese and die. Oh my gosh, I love that one, Maribel said, grinning. No, that's not what I mean. Casey held her hands up, clearly annoyed that we didn't get it. Everyone has a last photo before they die. Like, for example, my grandpa. Three days before he passed away, he went on a fishing trip. The last photo on that trip is the last photo that was ever taken of him. Well, it's impossible for a camera to show that, I replied. It would have to be a time-traveling camera for that to work. You guys are no fun! Casey rolled her eyes and started putting the camera back in her bag. Wait, wait. We didn't say we didn't want to use it, Maribel said. Yeah, it could be fun, I added. A wicked smile flashed on Casey's lips. Okay, good. Who wants to be the first? Brady raised his hand. I'll go. That was Brady for you. Never missed a chance to impress the girls. He stood up, his face lit by the roaring fire. Where should I stand? The lighting's kind of harsh. Maybe by that tree. Brady walked several feet away from the fire and stood next to the tree. Then he leaned against it, crossed his arms, and raised an eyebrow. Casey raised the camera to her face. Three, two, one, cheese, click. White light flashed across the dark backyard. Brady stepped away from the tree, grinning. Okay, who's next? Casey asked. I'll go, Maribel said. She pushed her glasses up her nose and stood next to the tree, somewhat awkwardly. Casey lifted the camera to her face again and took a photo. Click. The ratcheting sound of her rewinding the film filled the air. Okay, Benny, your turn, she said, shooting me a smile. I walked over to the tree, took off my baseball cap, and waited. Casey lifted the camera to her face and then frowned. Can't you smile? Nope. Ugh, fine. Click. She rewound the film and handed the camera to me. Then she posed next to the tree, in a classic sorority squat pose. Yeah, this wasn't awkward at all. Casey and I had just started dating. But the longer things went on, the more doubts I was having. Sure, we looked good in pictures, a classic football star cheerleader match. In reality, we weren't either of those things. She was pretty, but extremely insecure, jealous, and high maintenance. I was a neurodivergent math nerd who just happened to luck out genetically and look like a jock. I stared at her through the viewfinder, her form slightly distorted. Click. Hey, you didn't count down. She whined. What? You were posing. I want to know exactly when the photo is being taken. That's all. Okay, sure. I rewound the camera and handed it back to her. She sidled up next to me and lowered her voice. Hey, when Brady and Maribel leave, you want to stay a little bit after? Oh, I don't know. My dad's renovating the kitchen, and he wants me to help him in the morning. It doesn't have to be long. Just for a little while. I should have said no, but she was pushing, and I felt bad saying no. Okay, just for a half hour. Sounds good to me. We can watch something down in the basement. My parents can't hear a thing down there. What about your neighbor? He seemed really mad when we were watching V for Vendetta. Said the explosions woke him up. Remember he was pounding on the glass door and yelling at us? She rolled her eyes. So we'll keep the volume down. Come on, it's just a half hour. We don't even have to watch anything. Okay. Before I could say more, she grabbed the camera and started towards the fire pit. I followed. When are you going to get those developed? Brady asked. We could go tonight. There's still a one-hour photo in the CVS on Route 14, Maribel replied. 
And we could pick up some snacks. Wait, seriously? They still develop photos? Casey asked. Mm-hmm. My dad uses them for, like, passport photos and other official stuff. So it was decided. The four of us piled into Brady's car and took off into the night. We spent the entire hour hanging out at the store, picking out snacks. Then Casey went up to the counter, grabbed the paper envelope, and led us back out to the car. We piled inside and Brady turned on the lights. She flicked open the envelope and pulled out the photos. No fucking way. The first photo showed an older man standing on a beach. Gray hair dripping wet, blue waves rolling behind him. But with his square jaw and tall build, he looked just like an aged up Brady. That's impossible, I said. Not necessarily, Maribel replied after a pause. The camera looked like a disposable camera, but it's possible someone put a cheap microchip in there, like a mini Raspberry Pi or something. Then it took our photos, and with the help of AI, aged them up. Yeah, but how would the CVS develop them? I asked. Maybe it was straightforward. Maybe when he opened the camera to get the film, there was a USB stick there instead, loaded up with the images. So he just stuck it in the computer and printed them out. It's weird, but... Amazon is full of weird shit like this. I once saw a karaoke machine that used AI to auto-tune everyone as they were singing, in real time. We could go back inside and ask them, I suggested. I want to see the rest of the photos first, Casey said, nearly cutting me off. Where'd you get this camera again? Maribel asked. A friend gave it to me. And with that vague response, she flipped to the next photo. It was a family Christmas photo. Several people standing in front of the tree, happy faces lit by multicolored lights. But my heart dropped when I saw the woman on the left. A woman, maybe 30, holding a little baby, with the same heart-shaped face and the same curly dark hair as Maribel. Oh no, she said, her eyes wide. We all stared at the photo, silently, unsure what to say. But then I saw it. In the middle of the photo, sitting on the couch, was an old woman. A very old woman, with skin so wrinkled it looked like crepe paper, and hair so white it looked like a tuft of cotton candy on her head. Wire-framed glasses were perched on her nose. I think that's you. Maribel snatched the photo out of Casey's hands. Whoa, she whispered, studying it up close. For all her big talk about this being some AI thing, she seemed to take it pretty seriously. As I watched Maribel, I couldn't help but smile. For a second, I felt something. A sense of awe as I looked at her face, lighting up with the joy of her family. I'd never looked at Maribel as anything other than a friend, but there was something tugging at my heartstrings now. Not even something I could put into words as a crush, or attraction, or lust. Just something. A flicker of connection, of emotion, of... Benny? I glanced at Casey, and then I looked down. In her hands was the photo she'd taken of me. The exact same photo. Of me tonight, holding my baseball cap, standing next to the tree. Not smiling. Staring straight ahead, eyes red from the flash. My first thought was the camera had malfunctioned. Whatever this was, AI or otherwise, had messed up and glitched on my picture. And it just spit out the photo as it was taken tonight. But as Casey, Brady, and Maribel stared at me with horror, I realized. So it's saying, the picture you took of me tonight is the last picture of me alive. I guess so, Casey said. The silence pressed in. I shook my head and forced a laugh. Come on, this is just some stupid prank camera. Like Maribel said, it's some AI thing. Maybe it even purposely skips some people to scare them. None of them were laughing. Okay, come on, let's look at Casey's. I plucked my photo from the stack and froze. Casey was sitting on the floor of someone's basement. Her hands were tied to a metal support pole with thick rope. A strip of duct tape had been placed over her mouth. The left side of her head was matted with blood and a thin trail dripped down the side of her face. Her blue eyes were wide with fear and looking straight at whoever was taking the photo. 
This is some sick fucking prank, Brady muttered, his voice low with anger. Casey just sat there, frozen. Let's go home, Maribel said. Forget about all this stuff. It's just... a prank, like Brady said. But Casey didn't move. She just sat there, the photo shaking in her hands, her blue eyes wide with fear. What's wrong? Maribel asked softly. The basement, she said finally, pointing at the photo. I recognize it. My dad and I went over there one time when he needed help with the fuse box, and I... I thought he was annoying, but I never... Casey, whose basement is it? I asked. She looked up at me, her eyes wide. My neighbor's. Thank you.